discuss domain specific embedded systems so there are many domains in which embedded systems are used but we will be choosing automotive domains let us look at this clearly one by one so what are the various domains in which embedded systems are used first one is your consumer electronics examples yes i think you can tell it on your own you have your washing machine you have your refrigerator your ac your oven all this comes under consumer electronics okay Next, you have your industrial so you have your medical industry where embedded system is most commonly used okay fine you have many other applications in industries where you have your embedded system then you have your telecom industry and then you have your automotive industry okay but this telecom and automotive industry take the biggest share so we are going to take automotive embedded system today so what is automotive embedded system so automotive embedded system in short if i have to say when embedded system is used in automobile industry you call it as automotive embedded system so what is happening here here your electronics is taking control over the mechanical systems okay so your electronics is going to control all the mechanical systems which are present in your embedded systems so i'll repeat it again your electronics is taking control of all the mechanical systems okay we will take the best example that is our car to explain this okay so now how is this automotive embedded system built this automotive embedded system is usually built around small microcontrollers okay or dsp chips so what is microcontroller you know you have studied what is microcontroller a microcontroller is a system on a chip a small system on a chip so there are many variants you have 8 bit microcontroller you have 16 bit microcontroller you have 32 bit microcontroller so there are many variants or it can be a dsp chip so digital signal processing so this chip will process the signals in a most efficient way or it can be combination of both or that is why i say it is hybrid okay so your automotive embedded system is usually built around this okay so i will take an example to explain this so now let's take you have your seat belt okay for you yeah va vandu kora priya ellame porchu na yerukka theriyum theriyum andha kadha tharathra sound kuda kekkudhu hello in today's class we are going to see domain specific embedded system so there are many domains in which embedded system is used we are going to select automotive domain okay first let us understand what are the various domains in which embedded system is used okay so the first is your consumer electronics so you know what is consumer electronics your refrigerator your washing machine your oven your air conditioner all these are your consumer electronics and you very well clearly know that and in all these appliances you have your embedded system used the second domain is industrial like your medical industry the third one is your telecom and the fourth one is your automotive okay the telecom and automotive take the biggest share so we are selecting automotive embedded systems today okay so automotive embedded system first you must understand what is automotive embedded system so in automotive embedded system what happens is the electronics 
take control of the mechanical systems okay so the electronics take control of the mechanical systems the best example is your car your car is basically a mechanical system okay so now this car is controlled using electronics you use electronics to control the various parts of the car okay let's see how that is done first how was your automotive embedded system built automotive embedded system is usually built around microcontrollers so you know what is a microcontroller you have studied previously your microcontroller is a system on a chip okay it's a small system on a chip so your automotive embedded system is either built around a microcontroller or your dsp chip so what is dsp digital signal processor okay so this chip can process signals very fast okay you know in your microcontroller you have many variants it can be an 8 bit microcontroller it can be a 16 bit microcontroller or it can be a 32 bit microcontroller and it goes on fine so your embedded systems in automobile industry is usually built around the microcontroller or dsp or combination of both which we call it as hybrid okay so the combination of both we call it as hybrid so embedded system is usually built in automobile industry around this okay let's see how this is done okay i will take the very common car example and i will take the seat control in your car so you would have seen in many cars okay seat belt control you would have seen okay as soon as the car is turned on the ignition is given if you don't put on your seat belt you get a warning sign okay so how is this warning sign received this warning sign we get when electronics comes inside so how do i build an embedded system for this particular thing okay now let's take i take a small microcontroller so now let's take i take a 16 bit microcontroller fine i connect a sensor to this to detect whether my seat belt is put properly or not yes and based on this i connect a small indication okay so this indication is used to tell you whether the seat belt is put properly or not and now you can connect your seat belt also to this microcontroller fine so here this together okay the seat belt in your car we call it as ecu so what is ecu it is the electronic control unit so how is this ecu built you have a small microcontroller around which systems are integrated together to build the ecu so ecu is called as the electronic control unit which you must remember okay so in your automotive embedded systems for example in your car you have many such ecus okay now let us see what are the various ecus you have so you can look into this picture you have your ecu for brake control for your ignition control for your engine control for power steering okay then for your tv if you have tv inside you have an ecu for controlling the tv you have an ecu for your audio system you have an ecu for your airbag so for all these things you have ecus okay so how are these ecus built come on recollect these ecus are built around a small microcontroller or a dsp chip so the microcontroller variant depends upon the type of your application for example we saw the seat belt for seat belt you used a 16 bit microcontroller now let's take you have your engine control for your engine control you may use a 32 bit or 64 bit microcontroller so depending on the application you select your microcontroller so in your automotive embedded system what is important is your ecu so you have a lot of ecus with which electronics takes control over the mechanical system okay now ecus are of two types one is high speed ecu and the other is low speed ecu so what is high speed ecu high speed ecu means from the mean from the word itself we understand the response is fast so when should the response be fast the response should be fast when we use a critical system so what is a critical system so critical system is a system in which the response should be very fast 
Otherwise, it will cause great damage to life and property. The best example is your ABS, automatic braking system. So how should the brake response be? The brake response should be very fast. That is why we call it as critical. Otherwise, it is going to cause great damage. For such a kind of system, you use high-speed ACUs, ECUs. Okay, another example is your airbag. Okay, so if there is an accident, immediately your airbag opens. When should the airbag open? Immediately it should open. So it is a critical system. So for such a kind of system, you use high-speed ECUs. Okay, then you have your low-speed ECUs. So this is used in non-critical applications. Okay, naturally, the cost of this will be less. Why the cost is less? Because the speed is less. So where is it used? This is used in seat control, seat belt control. It is used for entertainment, window, window control. Okay, your wiper control and many such things where the application is not critical, where the response is not needed very fast. Okay, so these are called the easy use. Now, can anyone think and tell me how many easy use will a car have? Generally, your car will have around 20 to 40 easy use. Okay, but if it is a very luxury car, okay, you may have you may have around 70 to 100 easy use also. Okay, so the number of easy use depends on the luxury of your car and the safety of your car. Okay, so here are some of the examples of high speed control and low speed control. So your braking system, central electronics, throttle, engine, wheel, transmission control are all high speed ECUs. Your audio, your climate control, diver, driver's door, passenger door, phone, power seat, rear electronics, sunroof, all these are low speed ECUs. You can take these examples to jot down. Okay, the next is your automotive communicative buses. So what is the meaning of buses? Generally tell me what is a bus? A bus helps you to move from one place to another. Similarly here, bus carries information from one place to another, carries info from one place to another. Okay, so here in automobile industry, we use serial buses. So what is the meaning of serial Serial means data goes bit by bit, okay? So you have only one wire. The number of wires are reduced, so the complexity is reduced. So generally in automobile industry, when you use the embedded systems, serial buses are used. So what is a serial bus? In a serial bus, data is transferred bit by bit, okay? So the number of wires gets reduced, okay? So three different buses are used. The first one is the CAN, second one is the LIN, and the third one is the MOS. Okay, let us discuss it one by one. The first one is your CAN. So CAN, what is the meaning of CAN? CAN means controller area network. Okay, controller area network. Fine. So this was introduced by Robert Bosch. Okay, so Robert Bosch are pioneers in automobile industry. So CAN was introduced by Robert Bosch. Okay, so here in CAN, there are many speeds available. Okay, so I just write down two. One is medium speed and the other one is high speed. Okay, so in your medium speed, this supports up to 125 kbps. Okay, and your high speed supports up to 1 mbps. Okay, so when is CAN used? CAN is used in critical applications when the response should be very fast. Okay, they are used in critical applications where the response should be fast, so the safety also will be very high. Okay, what is the important feature of CAN? CAN is an event driven protocol. It is an event driven protocol. So based on event, your protocol will work. Okay. For example, if there is an accident, airbag will open. So accident is an event, okay? So based on event, this protocol will work, okay? That is why it is used in critical applications, okay? So here, like I told you, it is also used for safety, safety needs. So you can also use this for ABS. So all critical applications, 
when you use, you will use this CAN protocol. So now look into this picture. You have your car. You have your traditional method where you have a lot of wires in the car. But when you use CAN, the protocol is so structured so that the number of wires is reduced and the complexity is reduced and the response also, you get it very fast. Okay, so CAN means, I'll repeat it again, controller area network. Controller area network. Okay, next is your LIN. So what is LIN? LIN means local interconnect network. Local interconnect network. Okay. So this is used in low speed applications. So what is the speed this supports? This supports speed up to 20 kbps. Okay, so this is used in non-critical applications like your entertainment, your fan control, mirror control. Okay, so all these non-critical applications, you can use your LIN. Okay, fine. One of the important feature of LIN is it is a single master, multiple slave protocol. So you have single master and multiple slaves. So what is the meaning of this? Your master only will tell you which slave will connect to the bus. Okay, now let's take you have a bus and you have many ECUs connected to your bus. Okay, fine. Now let's take this is your LIN and you have one, two, three. Three ECUs connected to your LIN protocol. Fine. So now, for example, when both one and two wants the bus at the same time, what happens? There will be a collision. Okay. So when one and two wants the bus, at this, when one also wants to send an information, two also wants to send an information. For example, you have two ECUs, one for fan control, the other for mirror control. When you want to do both fan control and mirror control at the same time, what happens? There is only one bus. So there will be a collision. Okay, so how is this collision avoided? This collision is avoided by single master, multiple slaves. So your master will decide which ECU will take over the bus. Okay, so what is avoided in LIN? Bus arbitration is avoided. So what is bus arbitration? When two or more devices want to access at the same time, it leads to bus arbitration. So bus arbitration is avoided in LIN. Okay, so LIN means local interconnect network. It is used for non-critical applications. The most important feature is a single master, multiple slaves. Okay, so with this, this avoids bus arbitration. Okay, now the third automotive communicative bus is your most, most means media oriented system transport. I'll repeat it again. It is media oriented system transport. Okay, this is generally used in the European cars. Okay, and is used for audio video interfacing. Okay, it is used for audio video interfacing. Okay, for this, it uses fiber optic cable for communication. So the various topologies it supports are star, ring, and daisy chain okay so these three proto these three topologies it supports okay the ECUs can be in the star format or it can be in the ring format or it can be in the daisy chain form okay so this most communicate most is a protocol which is used only for audio video interfacing okay and this uses fiber optic cable okay it takes control of the physical layer application layer a network layer of your communicative channels, communicative standards or communicative layers. Hope everything is clear. If you have any doubts, you can ask me. Thank you.